So there's been a lot of excitement and chatter around this recent news report about China testing a hypersonic missile for the very first time. And that to a missile that can deliver a nuclear warhead. Now, what is this excitement about? What is this story about? What is so different about this new technology? I'll try and break it down from both points of view. Why this technology is new, why the United States should be worried about this technology, and also what is the defense against this new technology? What exactly is a hypersonic missile? It's like a conventional uh, intercontinental ballistic missile, a uh, conventional ballistic missile. The only difference is a ballistic missile goes from point A to point B almost like in a curve, like a parabolic curve. You fire it from point A, then it goes uh, into higher orbit in space and then comes down through the atmosphere and hits point B. So it's like throwing a ball up in the air. You throw a ball up in the air, it will come down in a parabolic curve because of gravity. That's a conventional ballistic missile. A hypersonic missile is also fired off from point A. It goes up to the Earth's atmosphere, breaches the atmosphere, reaches the lower orbit. It does not go into higher orbit. It reaches the lower orbit uh, right outside the atmosphere in lower orbit space and then glides all the way till the point where it wants to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. So in this instance, for example, one other notable thing that the Chinese did in the hypersonic test that happened on, in August was this particular missile glided in lower orbit, circled all the way across the circumference of the Earth in lower orbit uh, around the South Pole. Now, conventionally, the US has guarded itself against missile attacks from China and from Russia all through the North Pole route. This is the first time that a country has tested a missile using the South Pole route and that is not something that the United States has missile defense for. The other very important thing as far as the missile defense is concerned, now conventionally when you fire a, a ballistic missile, the moment it gets fired off from point A, you can calculate the trajectory. The trajectory is uh, largely, it remains the same. It's very difficult in a conventional ballistic missile to change trajectory midway through the flight of the missile. So once it leaves point A, if you have state-of-the-art sophisticated missile defense uh, equipments and supercomputers, then you can, to a, to a reasonable amount of accuracy, tell what is the destination or what is the point B that this ballistic missile wants to hit. Also, because conventional ballistic missiles go higher up into orbit, they are much easy to detect either through radars, ground-based uh, radar stations, or even through satellites that are up in space because conventional ballistic missiles go all the way uh, into the higher reaches of outer space. Whereas with a hypersonic missile, for both of these reasons, because it doesn't go into higher orbit, it goes into lower orbit, it is much more difficult to pick up by both conventional ground-based radar stations as well as uh, from outer space through satellites because it doesn't go into higher orbit. It's much like aircraft technology. Conventional military radars can pick up flights that are at a much higher uh, flight path and a much a higher uh, height uh, uh, compared to those that are going uh, in lower flight. So the exact same principle applies for missiles as well. So what is then the big deal about why China did this? China is sending out not just a military signal to the United States, but clearly things have uh, ratcheted up between Beijing and Washington over the last three, four years or so, uh, particularly uh, in the question of Taiwan, vis-a-vis -vis the question of Hong Kong, all the island disputes that China is having with Japan, Vietnam, of course the, the Himalayan uh, clash that's going on between India and China, all of these factors have played a role in the Chinese perception that sooner or later there will be some kind of a long-drawn war. Even if it's a conventional one, there will be a long-drawn war in which inevitably the United States will have to get drawn in. Now, China, by testing a hypersonic missile, is sending out a signal to the United States that, for example, if in the event of a clash where uh, Taiwan is forcibly annexed or for China uses force to try and annex Taiwan, then if the US were to enter that war, then China is basically laying the threshold of that war. 
it's basically telling the United States, we have the capability of hitting you with a hypersonic missile, which your radars are conventionally not built to detect, your missile defense conventionally is not uh, built to defend against, and most importantly, it goes through the southern polar route, which you were not prepared for. So the cost of escalating that conventional war up until the nuclear threshold becomes that much higher for the United States. On the other side, the United States is viewing this, A, with a great degree of surprise, because uh, from all the reports that we've seen, uh, whether it's Pentagon officials, officials uh, in, uh, in the CIA, all seem to be absolutely stunned by the speed with which this has happened. We watch closely China's development of, uh, of uh, armament and, and advanced capabilities uh, and systems that will only increase uh, tensions in the region. Also, what's interesting is the manner in which they detected how this uh, test came about to be. Remember, China launches what is called the Long March rocket. Uh, essentially, these are all like satellites. They have to be launched into space uh, on the same technology uh, that's used to launch satellites into space. So you have to have rockets uh, to put it up into, into orbit in space. And then uh, using gravity and other technology, it comes down uh, to the intended target. So in this case, China has been long testing the Long March rockets. I think they do about a dozen, some in some years even more than a dozen every, every single year. So this time, uh, they had one Long March rocket that was tested and publicly announced uh, in the month of July. There was another one, the Long March 79, which was tested in uh, late August, which was also announced. And suddenly, the Long March rocket number 78, which was the one in between, there was no public announcement or acknowledgement of that particular uh, missile, that particular rocket launch. That's when uh, the FT correspondent who broke this story detected that this missing launch, the launch number 78, which was the missing piece, that turned out to be the hypersonic missile. Now, for, uh, for the record, China is denying that this was a, a, a hypersonic missile. It says the, the Long March rockets are something that they uh, conventionally do and have traditionally have done. It's basically for uh, sharpening up their space technology, for sending more and more satellites uh, into air. This 这对于降低航天器使用成本具有重要意义，可为人类和平利用太空提供便捷、廉价的往返方式。世界上有多家公司都开展了类似实验。so that brings us back to the whole question of how the United States will now view this kind of new age warfare. Now some would say this is not something new, this is something that uh, the Soviet Union used to do uh, in the 70s and 80s. It's called the fractional orbital bombardment system, which means your missile or the projectile that you're sending goes up into space, it's in lower orbit, and from lower orbit, it targets the destination that it needs to hit. Now this was something that uh, uh, the Soviet Union eventually gave up, the FOBS, uh, eventually gave up in 1991 when the country itself disintegrated. Uh, after which, there was a conventional anti-ballistic missile treaty, which almost all the major powers in the world, including the United States, uh, had signed up to and were part of uh, very successfully for a number of years. So if you remember, uh, you go back to the, the 90, late 90s Pokhran tests that India did, one of the big concerns that the world community had at that time was that India had not signed up uh, to ABM and in fact for a number of years uh, the American interlocutors were trying to convince India to sign up on the anti-missile, uh, uh, anti-ballistic missile treaty. Now what happened after 9-11, George Bush and his then uh, defense secretary um, Donald Rumsfeld took a call to walk out of this anti-ballistic missile treaty. So right now for the last 20 years or so the world does not have a regulatory framework, does not have a treaty, does not have a legal document which governs how all major powers control their nuclear weapons, its stockpile, and of course, if there are any, uh, any treaties uh, to control who can use, whether they can use first or whether they, they will only have second strike capability and so on and so forth. Now, the last time China and the United States had a dialogue on the question of nuclear weapons was six or seven years ago. Obama was president 
and it was not even at a very high level. It was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at the assistant secretary level, which is a fairly low level uh, for diplomatic engagement. After which, there's been no communication whatsoever on the question of nuclear weapons between Beijing and Washington. And this comes at a very critical time because Joe Biden, the President of the United States, is going to undertake a complete review, a complete overhaul of America's nuclear doctrine. And this test by China at this time sends out a message to Washington that look, we have this new capability, you do not have any produced knowledge of how to defend against this capability. By doing this, China is also sending a signal that if you are open to talks, if you are going to review your nuclear doctrine, and if we both are agreeable to no first use, then this is a signal that China is sending that we are willing uh, to come to the negotiating table. Now, the question is, what message does the United States draw out of it? It could possibly draw two messages out of it. One, that China is on this almost irreversible path of militarization, and the only way to stop that uh, is to go back to what happened between the US and the USSR, uh, almost like a, an arms race of sorts. There is also the other view to, to look at this and say that China is sending out a signal that they are willing to sit down and negotiate as far as uh, nuclear weapons are concerned because it is in their interest, it is in China's interest to ensure that even if there were to be a future conflict, let's say the most probable case would be Taiwan, it is kept below the nuclear threshold. That is in China's interest uh, to ensure and that's why they've done this test as well, to send out the signal to the US that, that we're willing to come to the table if you create the conditions, the favorable conditions for having a dialogue about nuclear weapons.